Hello, everybody. We will be starting in a couple minutes. Welcome, we'll be starting in a couple minutes. Hey, Authorine, did you see my note, my text? You're muted. I unmuted you. Oh, okay. Not the last one. Okay, take a look uh, at it. Okay. I just jumped off of a... Um, coaching call. Yeah, me too. Yes. Yeah, okay. I thought so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see him on. I don't see him on either. All right, I'm going to exit full screen. So I can jump on here. <coughs> We're so glad that you're all here today. Yeah, right. We're waiting for our guest to introduce to get started. So hope everybody's having a great Monday, staying cool. And working hard. Oh, sorry, that was a yawn. You know what, Julian? I better call him just to make sure it's not one their time. Oh, God, gosh. <laughs> no, I, I don't think it is because we were. Oh, well, let's just make sure that he doesn't think it's, or maybe his calendar said one on his time. Hey, team, if you're looking for me, I'm right here. Yeah, oh, yes. hello. Hey, if you're looking for me, I'm we right were, here. Todd. We were. That's pretty stealthy, right? Yeah. Yes. It's sliding in yeah. there. Last yeah. time I last time I checked, Orlando and, and uh, Georgia were the same time zone, right? Yes. yes. Well, you know, you never you? know, right? That's <laughs> right. We are a fun bunch. Thank you all for being here. You yeah. bet. And I'm sure we're going to have others joining us. So um, I'll monitor the chat button. Yeah. And um, authoring, would you please introduce our guest? We're so excited to have you here for our mastermind. Yes, absolutely. And Todd, that's Julianne. She's the other PC coach in the. Um, Hi, Julianne. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Pleasure to meet you. You too. Yeah. We're very, very excited to have you here. And thank you so very much for being in culture and for taking time out of your busy, busy, your busy schedule because I know you are busy. So. Uh -oh. It's my pleasure. I'm 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 humbled. Sincerely, I'm yeah. I'm taken back. I'm going. Oh my gosh, I better deliver. No, I will. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna share with you some great stuff. Okay. At least I think so, and I'm gonna have a good time. So at least as long as at the end of this, I'm gonna have a great time. Okay. Um, good. So did you want to go ahead and just get started now, or do you have any announcements, or how do you guys? Yes. Run this? Yes. I want to tell everybody that you've been a real estate agent since you were eight years old, and nobody on this call can say that. I'm so blushing. we're looking forward to hearing from you. Did everybody read um, Todd's bio? I'm just gonna go over it a little bit. Todd started his real estate career. In terms of like, she wants to, if she can't sell it, she wants to rent it. Christopher. And I don't really wanna, I don't wanna. Can, thank you. You don't wanna be involved with that? No. Can you mute him please? Uh, it, it wouldn't be profitable for the headache from me sitting and talking with her. Oh, she, okay. She's gonna want a lot, you know what I'm saying? She don't want a lot, she gonna want everything. Can you mute him? 
It's all good. Yeah, it's all I good. Listen yeah, no. to the scripts. <laughs> Looking for paperwork, I'm like, my, why you, uh, my brain feels full, so I gotta work right now. Whoever, whoever is the uh, admin, do that obviously. Love you, like me, but uh, maybe we all got well, all of us got muted, maybe. Please mute yourselves. And if you would like to speak, please unmute yourself. All right, so we're going to jump right in. Todd's mom was a real estate agent, so he's been shadowing her since he was eight years old. He, of course, jumped into the business at 19 and first sale, a million dollar sale. Wow, wow. So he got the bug early. He's got 30 years of experience. He came over to KW in 2008, never looked back. Todd's been around the block more than once. He's been a TL team leader, right? So he gets us. He's a real estate agent at heart. So he gets us. He understands the ups and the downs of our business, right? He's a sure. um, KW-approved sure. instructor. That is huge. He's a MAPS coach, and he's also a BOLD coach. So he's got a combined 30 years experience. So do you guys think he has something he can teach us? Do a thumbs up or use your electronic? Yeah, thank you. So we want to welcome you. Here's what this is not, because I've gotten private messages from you guys. Is he going to talk us into, is he going to sell BOLD? No, he's not selling bold. I have asked him to come in and talk about listings, mindset, and how we just power our way through this year that we've all been given and how we ramp up for 2021. So please go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Coach Todd. Thank you so much. I am in awe of that. And now I'm thinking no pressure, no diamonds. That's a bold law, right? Yeah. Well, thank you for that. And I asked you this once before, and I'm going to ask you just one more time. I want to say your name correctly. Will you pronounce it for me? Aferim. Like I assume. Aferim. And yet, you know what happens when we assume, right? So thank you, Aferim. Thank you, Julianne. Thank you for the rest of you for being here. I see the number at the bottom of the screen growing. Um, you know, that being said, I want to clarify our timing. Um, I have up to an hour or less if we don't need it. Is that correct? Yes. Off the top of the hour or less. Okay. Yes, please. So you got it. Thank you. So if, here's, here's the thing that we're going to do today. Um, I'd like to just ask you, um, and again, thank you so much for this amazingly warm and loving welcome. I, I don't know that I deserved it. And yet hopefully at the end of the call, um, all of you will be so glad that you're here. And I'll even go as far as saying, um, if you see somebody that's not on the call, that's a friend or a buddy of yours at the market center, um, I want to encourage you while we're talking here for the first few minutes to, to text them and to encourage them to jump on this Zoom uh, because you never know what you might hear. And what I love about this is it's not so much what I say, it's what we all collectively might say. See, I'm going to bring some ideas and yet we're stronger as a team than I am as an individual. So I want to encourage you, encourage others to be a part of this. This is a great showing. I'm so glad you're here. And, um, you know, my intention is to share some ideas to get us thinking and to slow down, to speed up. And that's something that one of my mentors and a regional director many years ago shared with me. He says, hey, Todd, you got to slow down to speed up. So that being said, um, I know that uh, Julianne's going to monitor the chat box. If there's anything in there at any time, um, please let me know. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Where is the screen? I want to share that screen. Um, and just as Arthurine said, we're not here to sell bold pivot. We're here to let you know that it's here. And yet I'm going to spend 97% of the talk today on everything except bold pivot. So you have my word on that. We'll wrap up with just a couple things on that. However, I'd like to ask you all a question before we get started. 
And that question is going to require you to either unmute or to put something in the chat box and um, to play at a really high level. And the first question I have for you is, how do you desire that I show up today? Why are you here? And what are your expectations? Let's start with that question. You got an invitation. You said, hey, we're going to have this, this get together on Zoom. And how do you desire that I show up? And what is it you're looking to take away? So who wants to start that? I am always looking for tips on how I can be more efficient, even during this crazy time, because I'm still sheltered in place. So how can I be efficient and continue to get business through this crazy time, knowing that we may have um, a lag in the fall, which I'm a little concerned about. And somebody put on here that they're looking for inspiration and motivation to stay on track. Good. Um, for me, I think it's primarily um, the mindset aspect of it because I know that I've struggled a lot with my mindset. And um, just as somebody mentioned, change my mindset, focus on the positives and stay on track. Yeah. Is that, is that Namita, right? That was a great, great share. And I would think that um, the first three that were already shared, I think to some degree, all of us on the conversation today would agree. Um, how, how, about, how about this? Specifically, how do you expect I show up? What are you expecting of me? You can be bold. Let me ask you this. Do you expect me to be prepared? Yes, yes. And someone says, just stay on track. Yes. Okay. Do you expect me to um, bring energy? <laughs> yes, I was going to okay. say energy. Okay. And so I guess, fun. yes, fun is a great thing, right? Yes. So let, let's just go ahead and switch slides. The reason I ask you that is to ask you this. There's a bold law, right? For those of you that have been through bold before, is how you participate in here is how you'll participate every, excuse me, everywhere. So I don't know about you. Um, let me ask our, our leaders before I say this. It's okay just to be direct and bold, yes? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So gonna, fair enough. I'm going to pretend that I've known you all for 30 years, right? Let's, let's just kind of put the, the nuances to the side of, oh, you know. No, let's just get right into it. We have a limited amount of time. And here's what I know is that in this Zoom world, what I'm noticing is I'm going around the country there's a lot of us, and by the way, as I say this, I'm not calling anyone out. I'm just telling you what I've observed, and I think you would say that you've seen the same. Most of us put ourselves on mute, and we close off our video screen, and we aren't really engaged at the highest level. And if that's the way you choose to show up on the call today, that's perfectly fine. We definitely want to make sure that we don't have any background noise because that could be a distraction of the call. So we always respect and appreciate you putting that on mute. And yet if you don't typically show your video or that's not how you've showed up, I just want you to think about this bold law. How you participate here is how you participate everywhere. And if you play at a high level, even on the Zoom call, not because I'm the one speaking, how we participate here, if we're engaged, if we're asking questions, if we're paying attention, if we're raising our hand, if we're coming from curiosity, that's exactly how we're showing up out there and it affects our income. So I just wanna throw that out there, just to say that, you know, let's have the very best Zoom call that we've ever had. Is that fair? That's fair. All right, so that being said, let's look at this together. This is something at MAPS Coaching that we've noticed that many of the clients that we have the opportunity to work with, just like yourselves, have said that they have to think and act differently to achieve their goals. Thinking and acting differently. Our behavior must change in order to change our results, right? And when we say is that we have to get to better, it's going to be difficult to get there unless we get to different. Hard to get to better if we don't get to different. So that being said, here's a question. And I, I really would encourage you to write in your notes and that you're taking notes because here's what we know about adult learners. When you take notes, you literally have two to three times and up to 10 times, depending on the topic, a higher chance of implementing what you learned because you actually wrote it down. And here's what it is, says right here is, what is the one thing, if you've heard this question similar, right? What is the one thing you're willing to do different for the next 90 days such that by doing it, 
everything else would be easier or unnecessary. Not 10 things, one thing. And I'd like you to just be really honest with yourself. Don't be afraid of the answer. What's one thing you know right now that if you were to do it and do it differently, it would, al it would allow you to get to better? And feel free to, you know, shout out what the answer is. If you want to participate that way, that's wonderful. Add it in the chat box. That's great. And yet the more of this conversation is a two-way conversation than just a one-way conversation, I think that you're going to get more out of it. Okay, so for many of us, we might say, you know what, if I were to lead generate at a higher level for the next 90 days, it would make everything easier or necessary. Does anybody think that? Or, or let me hear at least one of you. What, what did you write down to this question? Yeah. yeah. Well, go Sorry. ahead. Go ahead. This is um, so I uh, vouch for my coach that I will lead generate minimum three hours a day. Minimum. So that's, you know, and I have to talk to 10 past clients a day. So that's my goal, okay, starting who today. That? Who is that speaking? I've got a minimum in my screen. Oh, this is Shelly. Hey, Shelly. Thank you so much hey. for participating. So three hours a day and 10 past clients is a part of that three hours, right? Uh, yes, that is correct. So it will okay. actually bleed to a little bit more because you can have uh, five minutes conversation with uh, past clients. It's more, you know, it's a lot longer. Right. So I actually blocked two hours in the morning and then three hours in the afternoon evening. Good for you. And by the way, if you do that at a high level, even if it's for a season, you can imagine what will happen to your business, right? Yeah. Correct. See, remember, this isn't forever. I think it's so important what Shelly brings up. Sometimes I think when we think of two hours and three hours and that kind of schedule, that's a lot, true or false? True. Yes. It's a lot. I mean, that's a lot. And yet it's for a season. And I don't think that's the thing we always remember is we think, oh my gosh, and we just let that be for a lifetime. You do that really at a high level and build that database out, add the value to your database, the referrals start coming in. And as you go deeper and deeper into your career, it's more of a maintenance relationship and you've leveraged those relationships and those people are actually helping you grow your business, right? So now, Shelly, I'm not being critical, and yet I'm a coach, and I heard something. May I say what I heard? I think I've muted her. Okay, that's okay. It's not gonna. It's it's not a big deal. I heard in there that I have to. I heard the word have to talk to ten past clients. Did anybody else hear that? Yes. Yes. So I would just like to encourage you to say, and I get to. Yeah. A little thing like that, you know, that I have to, because I don't know your relationship with your past clients. I don't know if that's an opportunity. Maybe you haven't engaged them. I don't know. I'm not judging. I'm just saying, I just, I just noticed that. So let's look at this bold law real quick. True or false, do what you've always done and you get what you've always gotten. Yep. The definition of insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So here's a formula for achievement. Who would be interested in a formula for achievement? We yep. talk about this in bold, and I would like to just share this with you. Even if you've seen it before, I'm going to slow down and break it down and hope that you'll take it away at a different angle or at a higher level of understanding than maybe in the past. In bold, we talk about be, do, achieve. And what we're talking about here is when you have the right mindset, that's the B. When you have the right mindset, you do the right actions or activities and you achieve your vision. Your goals, be, do, achieve. Notice it's not achieve, do, be, or do, achieve, be. It's be, do, achieve. And this is the deeper, more philosophical part that I'm going to read twice. It says who you are, which is the be piece, impacts what you do. And what you do impacts what you achieve and who you are. Who you are impacts what you do. It's an inside out job. Results start on the inside, they show up on the outside. If the results aren't showing up on the outside, the question we have is what is it that we could change on the inside to get the results to show up on the outside? Who do we have to become? What do we have to do to position us to achieve? And it's a cycle. What I really wanna focus on here is the B piece. Now, true or false, most of us and I could ask our coaches on the line, 
we usually have agents that will come up to us that are full of energy and great questions, and yet they're a do-based question. How do I do this? How yes. do I do, right? Yes. And there is nothing wrong with that. Yet that's what we hear as coaches. How do I? And as a coach, what I've learned from my coaches, right? I haven't figured this stuff out. I'm a student and a coach. We're all students. We're all coaches, right? We're all leaders, we're all followers. It's, it's, it's all, we're all the same in that. It's just that who do we have to become? Who do we have to become? Let me show you this. Look at these things here that are on the screen, if you would, please. And as you glance around, what I'd like to ask you to ask yourself, would these, for the most part, at the core, be the B pieces, the doing pieces, or the achieving pieces at its core? What do y'all think? Doing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It, it really is doing. You know, how do I do that listing presentation? How do I learn to negotiate more? How do I show property more efficiently? How do I use the new technology, right? And of course, I'm focusing on listing skills specifically. And right here in the middle, you'll see mindset, right? So Namita, earlier you talked about mindset. See, I believe, and I think you would agree at the core, all these do actions at the core are generated by our mindset. Not only our mindset, it's our goals. And our goals lead us to the lead generation. Our mindset and our goals are directly connected to lead generation. And if we're talking about like the one thing or the, the book, the one thing Gary Keller, J. Batman, we're talking about a lead domino. You know, what's the lead domino that has to tumble that makes everything easier or unnecessary? Well, it starts with our mindset and our goals, and then lead generation is that domino that makes pre-qualifying, scripts and role play, showing property, technology, handling objections, listing presentations, negotiations, following a schedule, et cetera, right? Because if we don't really have that, then we don't, you know, all the ones here in white don't happen unless we have the ones in yellow and red. And I want to be the first one on this conversation to admit that I struggle with this 30 years later. This isn't simple, I don't think, for anyone. I think that there's a, a very, and I think the coaches would agree with this, there's a very small percentage of people that just love the lead generator. I don't know what it is. I think if we could figure that out, then we'd have you know instant multi-multi-millionaire status. We could figure that out, put it in a pill, everyone could take one in the morning with a breakfast, wouldn't that be great, right? So to your guys' point about all this stuff around here, what we're really focusing on here is the mindset. And here's the neat thing. We can influence that mindset. We can make choices on a daily basis of who we hang around, what we read, what we listen to, our self-talk, our affirmations. And by the way, none of it's easy and yet it's worth it. So let's talk a little deeper about mindset. You may have heard this before. The question is, when was the last time you were aware of it? Because what we know is this, in order to make some kind of a change, first create awareness around it. In order to create some kind of a change, first create awareness around it. So there's a fixed mindset and then there is the growth mindset. These outcomes is permanent and unchangeable. And I just like you to think about which, which of these two do you think that you live in more? A fixed mindset sees our current place in life as safe and comfortable so we settle for what seems attainable instead of stretching for the big goal. Some of us will say that's our comfort zone that we stay in. And again, 30 years most experience, right? I can tell you, and I think some of you will agree with this, our comfort zone's not even comfortable, right? So, so Todd, would you su suggest or would you say that a, a fixed mindset is, is a scarcity mindset? Of course, I, I would agree with that um, because it's not abundant. <laughs> You know, abundance means that we really believe that anything and everything is possible if we're willing to go after it. In fact, to your point, Julianne, I had a bold coach, a friend of mine years ago, 2015, I'll never forget, I took bold. I took bold with this bold coach four times. I've been through bold 18 times, not just as a coach, I'm talking as an agent. Um, and I kept going back because to me, I thought it was just a great way to stay focused. It's not that I loved bold and I loved making the calls. And I lo there was pieces I loved about it. And there was times I'd wake up in the morning and go, oh my gosh, today's bold. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to bold. And that was the day that I needed the most. But what the coach taught me was that there was no failure, just feedback. 
And when Kate said that to me one day, if, if you'll join in this thought process with me, she said, Todd, there's no failure, only feedback. And then she went on to say is that, how do we not know that every thought we have isn't a limiting belief? Mm -hmm. I mean, that. That gets, yeah, I mean, that really starts tweaking your brain, right? Like yeah. every thought we had, she challenged me to think every thought we have, even when we're thinking big, can still be a limiting belief. How do we know what our true capacity is? And that's why I'm so glad, thank you, Julianne, for bringing this up, because it's not in my slide deck. And I thought this the other day, I was walking my dog. And I thought, oh, this is great. So we get on these Zoom calls, we bring the energy, we hope to leave value, we, we have good feedback at the end, people give their ahas. And then you know the biggest, the, the biggest part of the call that leaves me the most concern is when I push leave meeting. Mm. Because now I've disconnected. Now we've disconnected. And now I'm like, are you going to do something with what you just were able to get excited about? And so what that's saying to me is, I thought to myself, what's the difference between agents that are succeeding and agents that aren't having as much success or as quickly is they don't have a coach. Amen, brother. And I, yeah, thank you. And I'm not selling coaching. Coaching can be for fee or coaching could be a mentor or coaching could be someone at your place of worship or your wife, your husband, your son. Your, I mean, there's coaches show up in different ways. And yet what I know is this, the growth that I've had to take that I'm still on the journey, the path is because Jake and Pat and John and some of the coaches that, that I work with, they don't allow me to get too far off track too quickly. It's called accountability, right? So let me go on to the growth mindset. Um, Todd? Yes, yes, yes. Yvette wants you to repeat something again. Yvette, can you unmute yourself and ask him? That what? I will try, but I don't know what I had for breakfast. <laughs> what? Yeah, I don't know either. I don't know what I had for breakfast. Yvette, what's up? I just want to, hi, how are you, Scott? I'm wonderful. Great. Thanks for your great smile. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to put it on my mind when you say that uh, that we have to have a coach. Why? Can you repeat it? Yeah, now? sure. So, so here's what I'm saying, and thank you for slowing me down. It is hard to do real estate alone. This is a loaded business. There's so many things that we do from, you know, the lead generation and the marketing side of the business to the negotiations, to contracts. There's so many layers of real estate, right? And we only have so many hours in a day. So if we don't have somebody that's like running with us in the race, keeping us focused on the prize, keeping us going in the right direction, because I'm gonna talk about this in a minute, you bet, the 80-20. We have a tendency to spend all of our time in the 100. We spend our time in the 100% of our business when we really wanna get in a narrow lane and stay in our 20% activities that bring us 80% results. And if left to our own devices, my experience has been, that we get scattered everywhere, we get spread thin, and we get stressed out. And a coach can come along, and a coach can listen to you, and a coach can help you stay focused moving forward so you can achieve your goals faster. Does that help? Yes, thank you. And it's got, you're very welcome, great question. And I will also say, it has to be the right coach. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not just coach, it's the right coach, right? And I'm just saying, I, I, my whole life I've had coaches, and we'll get into this a little later too. Think about athletes. Athletes have coaches. The best performing people, people on Broadway, you know, the best actors and actresses have coaches. Everyone has a coach. Doing things alone is harder, that's all, right? Mm -hmm. So here's another bold law, right? Change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So let's look at these three L's for a moment. And I put there in the left in the uh, action item for you. If you notice, it says page 40 to 44, M-R-E-A, Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Now, many of us on this call have heard of this before, right? The question is this, and this isn't a judgment or a right or a wrong. It's a question, right? You really understand this slide at a high level. You don't have to answer that. Just, just internally. Do you really understand the slide at a high level? And if you don't, or if you feel that you could improve your awareness, go to page 40 to 44 when you have a moment, time block for it, and just read up on it and then get back with your coaches and you know, ask questions, give me a call, I'll give you my contact information here when we're done, okay? And what I wanna focus on for the rest of our call is the first two L's. 
the leads and the listings. The leads and the listings, okay? And what we're talking about here, and this kind of talks to your point, is that Gary Keller says that our job description is the following. It's these 20% activities that lead to 80% of our results. This is also called the Pareto Principle, for those of you that have heard that before. Bill Pareto, Pareto, back in the, the 18, 1900s, early, late 1800s, um, he figured out this law, and, and in the one thing, Gary Keller and Jay Papasan say that the law of the 80-20 principle is as real as gravity. If I take this right here, watch, you can see this, right? I just dropped that. That's gravity. I mean, it's, it's a law of gravity, right? And here's what we know. The first two things in our job description is lead generate and lead follow-up. As simple as this conversation is, every one of us, including myself, could do this at a higher level. Every one of us on this call, this is what's causing us to live and fund a perfect life or not live and fund a perfect life, right here in front of us. It's that simple. The other two things that he says is make presentations and go on appointments. And we know that when we get in front of sellers and buyers and we get them to agree to hire us, then that's going to lead to representing them where we negotiate contracts on their behalf, right? And we also know that practice and role play is the thing that makes all of that easier when you do that at a high level. So again, not to do anything more than awareness. I'd like you all to take, you know, if you're writing notes, I got my paper right here, right? I'd like you to just go ahead and write one to 10. And I'd like to ask you to rate yourself about the fifth one, practicing and role playing. One meaning you have the most room to improve, 10 meaning you're crushing it. Like you can't get any better. I don't know why this is, it's kind of interesting, Arthurine and Juliana, it's kind of interesting to me that number five isn't number one, right? Because I've met a lot of people, and I think you both have two ladies in your coaching practices, where people are sabotaging themselves to go out on appointments because they don't know what to say. I agree. I, I, I know this is the order that he tells it, but I think number one is, is the key, because if you do that first, then the other four you're much That's better right. at and more successful. Yeah. I'm back. Yeah, I mean, to your point, exactly. I remember vividly there was a um, mother-daughter team in New Jersey that I was coaching many, many, many years ago. And, and it took me about four, four, maybe three or four coaching calls to realize that the reason they weren't booking appointments is they were like, oh, my gosh, I'm not going to lead generate because if I go on an appointment, then I wouldn't know what to say. So they kind of like sabotage themselves. And here's what, here's what I want everybody on. We've got a nice group on here, right? Like all of us, please hear this. Everyone can learn what to say. And every one of us can say it in an awesome way based on your personality style and the people that you're communicating with. The question is, are you practicing enough? If you think about any other field, think about, um, I don't know, think about first responders. If there's an emergency, do you want them to practice on the scene? Or do you want them to know exactly what to do when they get the 911 call? Right? That's the kind of preparation. We never know when the phone's going to ring. So really what it comes down to is you're either a specialist or a generalist. And if you guys would just answer this question for me, if you're a doctor, for example, would you make more as a specialist or a generalist? All day long. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right? Common sense. So I want you to think about this. Am I a specialist in these areas? Am I a specialist in the conversations when I'm generating leads? By the way, we might generate a lead through Facebook. We might generate a lead through something online. At some point, we have to talk to them, right? Mm -hmm. So at some point, we don't get away from communicating with somebody to help them move through that process. Follow-up systems, presenting, all of this. Hey, this is the analogy that I used the other day, so bear with me. Does anybody on the call ever run a marathon or a half marathon? Just say aye. world of zoom i don't know if that's a i'm on mute or i haven't run one so let's all pretend that we don't run a lot we're not in the best shape here's uh, here's what i'm gonna uh suggest we all could finish a marathon someone asked me how i know that 
How? No. Thank you. Thank you. Because the assumption was we had to do it within like three or four hours, right? Isn't that what they're normally done? Normally, when you think, oh, I have to run a marathon, you're like, well, I could never do that. Well, what if I told you had a month to finish? What if I told you you could go one mile for 26 days? You could, you could run a marathon. So the assumption was we put time on it. So why do I make that weird analogy is to, to pull this together for you? Everyone can finish this marathon of learning exactly what to say and how to follow up at a high level, how to have awesome listing presentations. Here's the thing. Some of you will finish faster. Some of you will finish slower. And yet we all can finish the marathon. Does this make sense? Say yes. Yes. It's a yes. process. And if he goes faster or she goes slower or she goes slower and he goes faster, there's no judgment. Encourage everyone to the finish line. See, sometimes we overestimate what we can do in a year and underestimate what we can do in five. It's a process. It's a journey, right? So here's something to consider. How many of you all would agree with this? Everything that we desire, at least financially, is on the other side of learning how to effectively generate leads, follow up with the leads, convert the leads into appointments, and then make a convincing presentation to a seller and a buyer to hire you to represent them. I mean, isn't that real estate right there? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's really that simple. It's not easy. Hear what I said. It's simple and it's not easy. Now, what's the hard part? What am I pointing to? <laughs> This guy. Yes. This is what makes it hard. So I want you to think for a moment, how many homes do you intend to sell a month or a year? However it works. So if you say, well, I'd love to sell two homes a month. Okay, 24. Well, I'd love to sell three. Okay, 36. Whatever your number is, higher or lower, there's no right, there's no wrong. There's no better, there's no worse. It's your goal. Here's what I'd like you to say. If you're someone out there saying, well, gosh, I'd love to sell 24 homes a year. All you need to find is how many people that will do this with you. 24. How's your population up there? Do you have a few folks? Yes. See, do we care who's, why are we so focused on the ones that say no? We're looking for 24 that say yes. It's a mindset. And this is also what we know. We know that there's basically a cost involved in thinking this way. What is it costing me? Please answer this question for you. And I hope you're I hope you're fully engaged still, giving me 110%, not for me, for you, for your family. See, this call's not about me. It's not even always about you. It's about the people that aren't on the call. There's other people that aren't on this call that are counting on us to win, yes? So what is it costing me not to figure this out and quickly? Have some urgency, right? What is that dollar amount? By the way, it's not just money. It's, and it's not, I was just going to say, to me, it's not just money. I mean, I coach enough people that they, they're taking so long to figure it out that they're losing in on an opportunity to make as much money as they want. I know it's not finances, but it's a, it's a lifestyle that they could have because they're spending so much time trying to figure it out rather than just get in there and do it. Do it. And you see... When, when Julianne says that, and I've just met Julianne for the first time today, what I'm hearing is it's painful to us to see you go through the pain. It pains now, me terribly. You're so right, Todd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and guess what? I said this a minute ago. I never said this is simple or easy, and I never said I'm over it. I still have mindset stuff. I still have to have self-talk. I still have to read the books. I still have coaches. Just 30 years didn't make this thing just like get all easy. It just gives you perspective, right? Now, here's what we know, and, and Julian definitely will, will, will concur with this. The story we make up in our head about what's gonna happen never ever comes to be as big as the, as the story we made up in our head. Never. In fact, I like to say a little bit of fun, right, Arthurine? I like to say, did you graduate from MSU? <laughs> Making stuff up? <laughs> you have an MBA <laughs> from MSU? Right? Just go do it. Yeah. As long as it's legal, moral, and ethical, just go do it. Right? What is it costing you? And what's waiting for you in your future when you do it? And that's what I'd like you to fall in love with again are the results. Because here's the thing everything we do at the beginning is a little more challenging than once we do it, including for me. I started walking a 66 day challenge about four months ago. 
I started out at about a mile and a half, got to two miles. I finally worked up to four miles in an hour. I never was thinking I was going to do four miles in an hour in the Florida heat. You guys know about the heat, right? Yeah. It's not fun out there when it's all hot and muggy and humid. And yet it's worth it, right? So let's look at a few different ways that you can make money in real estate, right? Because it's about perspective, right? It's about perspective. You can wait for it. You can buy it or you can earn it. I haven't really found many other options. You can make it, you can wait for it, you can buy it or you can earn it. And I'd like you to ask yourself, which one of these describes your approach the most? And are you happy with the results? If you are, awesome. Let's figure out how to increase those results even another notch. My experience is most people aren't happy with the results. So why do I bring this slide to your attention is this. Perspective. Sometimes I think we get busy and we're not even consciously aware of what we're doing and then we're wondering why we're not getting the results. And where do we put our time every day? Well, I'll ask you, you're all my coach now. Pretend you all coach me. And if each one of you had a conversation with me and one, let's say Todd version A said, all I'm doing is waiting for my business. Todd version B says, all I'm doing is buying my business. Todd version C says that I'm out earning my business. You would coach me differently. I'd get different results. What does waiting for it mean? Anybody want to take a shot at that? There's no right, no wrong. Let's get a little bit more participation. I love my coaches, and yet who else wants to speak up? What could be an example of waiting for it? Waiting for business. Waiting for the phone to ring. My name's Adrian, and I think waiting until I know all the right things to say or something like that. No, Adrian, you are bold. I love that about you. Thank <laughs> you so Thanks. much. I love that. Yeah, that could definitely be. And there's no right or wrong answers, right? Waiting to be able to have it all figured out before I take action. What about this? What about, um, you know, and again, I know we're going through this, this pandemic. Let's talk about pre-pandemic. Uh, even maybe a virtual open house or a, or a physical open house. Would that be waiting for business? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about buying business? That's pretty simple, right? What's buying business? Internet leads? Facebook ads? I was even thinking about investment properties. To generate income, buying it? I yeah. love the way you're thinking. That's a high level thought. I love that. What about earning it? How would we earn money in real estate? How about just the good old pick up the phone, right? Mm -hmm. Call your database, call an expired, call a for sale by owner, these types of things. Of course, always check with your market center about do not call laws. There's my disclaimer with my asterisk, right? So I just want you to think, where are you hanging out? Let's look at this a little bit closer because I think that it's really important as you're moving forward in your business and working with your coach to understand why you're getting results and also understand what you might not be aware of that's causing you to not get the results in spite of the effort. Because I'm sure I'm not the only one on the call today that's worked really, really hard, felt like I was doing the right things, and yet I wasn't getting the results. And that can be frustrating, right? So let's look at some listing techniques and different types of response timelines. So we've got immediate, immediate response timelines. If you're calling your database, a buy owner or an expired listing, you could get an immediate response. Is that fair? You call someone in your database, you say something like we normally would say, hey, Arthurine, who do you know looking to buy, sell, or make an investment in real estate that I could contact today? Or who do you know looking to make a move this summer? Or you know, who do you know looking to buy a home with interest rates being historically low? I mean, there's so many simple little scripts to say that. We could get an immediate response. A for sale by owner has a sign on the lawn, they wanna sell right now. An expired came off the market at midnight. Yesterday they were for sale. They had a goal to move. This is immediate. Let's talk about future for a moment. Future response techniques. Well, I put database there as well because maybe you make the call to the database and yet they're not ready right now. That's possible. Open houses could be future business. Door knocking could be future business. Let's look at slow response for a moment. And these are just a few examples, right? Internet leads, cold calls, open house, slow response. The reason I put internet leads, yes, you could get a lead today and they could buy a house tomorrow. Yet we know statistically, most of them have upwards of a nine month incubation process, two to 3% of internet leads usually convert. 
And by the way, even if they're on the internet, we still need to know what to say and how to say it, right? So I'd like you to, again, ask yourself, buying it, waiting for it, and earning it, where have I been hanging out? And now I'd like you to take it a step further. Am I putting my efforts in immediate response, future response, or slow response techniques? Because when you start looking at all this, you might go, well, no wonder I'm getting results. I'm earning it in immediate response, or no wonder I'm not getting the results. I'm waiting for it in slow. Let's go a step, a, a step deeper. Passive or proactive is what you're doing to generate business, to get your business going. And by the way, remember about that little pill that I wish we could all take with our breakfast, that all this would go away and leads would flow and business and money would happen. Yet either it's, it's a passive or a proactive activity. So think about, are you, are you passive or are you proactive? And then the last one on this slide, this is something that I discovered years ago. Things that tend to be more confrontational tend to bring you money faster versus things that are less confrontational tend to bring you money slower. Can you give examples of those, Todd, please? Better believe it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for asking. So when I use the word confrontation, by the way, I think that's a much bigger word than really is required for this conversation. It's just to make a point that if I were to pick up a phone and call a buy owner, a for sale buy owner, the chances are is that I'd have to probably have a couple different skill sets and, and know some scripts and know what they're gonna say, know what I'm gonna say, and there could be some, some confrontation there. Like, I don't wanna pay a commission. Mr. Ms. Seller, I can appreciate that you don't wanna pay a commission. Other than the commission, is there anything else that might stop you from interviewing an agent like myself for the job of selling the home? Right, you might need it, That's, that could be confrontation. Uh, or an expired listing. Well, where were you when my house was listed? Right? The house has been for sale for six months. Why, have you, why didn't you sell it? Well, you know, Mr. Sell, I can appreciate that you would say something like that. In fact, there's three sales that it takes to get a home sold first. May I explain? See, first the agent has to sell the home to the buyer. The first the agent has to sell the home to other agents. See, that's what failed. That The agent did, didn't sell me the home. I mean, there's thousands of homes for sale. I mean, there's a script for that, right? So that's the confrontation that could happen. Now, if you go to, let's say, um, an internet lead, they have actually put their name and number in their information for you to call them. So arguably they're asking for you to call them, even though when you call them, sometimes there's confrontation. Or to an open house, they decided to park their car and come inside or go to the virtual open house. So does that answer your question, Julianne, is that one is gonna be a little bit more where you might run off the bat, have a little toe-to-toe, -to -toe, where the other will be less. I Makes sense? It. Makes total Makes sense. Okay. And, so and we, for the newer agents, can you go back just a step? I'd and love to. Quickly talk about the difference between passive and proactive activities, because I think a lot of people get that confused. You're, you're the best. So, so what we're talking about here, I guess the weird analogy that comes to my mind, by the way, don't go there alone, um, is, if I'm sitting on a beach and that cruise ship's out there and I really like to get on it, well, I can either swim out to it or wait for them to send me a dinghy boat, right? And if they're not sending the dinghy boat, I'm swimming out to it. I'm gonna be proactive. I'm gonna go get what I want versus waiting for it. Um, it's the activities that we're following. For example, um, and you're, you're welcome to share an idea too, because I know you might have one. Um, What's more direct, what's a more direct approach? Uh, mailing something to an expired or knocking on their door? There you go. Now, I, I, I know we're in the pandemic. I don't know the dynamics of what's going on in your area. And yet I don't want that to be a crutch either, right? We got to follow our guidelines and do things. I get that. I'm just giving an example. I have found that the path of least resistance is the proactive activity. Passive is where it's safer. You know, I'm going to hide behind my phone and text. Yes. Instead of pick up the phone and call. Thank you. Okay. And one last thing on that. When we use this phone to text, uh, no scientific proof to this team. And yet, if you want to write these numbers down real quick, um, when we're talking about body language, 55% of body language is, I'm sorry, 55% of communication is body language. So as you see, I'm moving my arms when we're on this call. I'm touching my chest. I'm touching my head. That's body language, that's 
38% of communication is tonality. The way I use the words, up and down, and the words I use. And then 7% is the words, it, it, the words itself, the words itself, 55, 38, and 7. So that's why texting is a dangerous thing for, for most things, because we're only using 7% of communication. 93% is out the door when we text. That's why we always use emojis. That's why we're, you know, LOL and putting a smiley face to bring the emotion and bring the tonality. I know that you all have had a text message before and you looked at it and you're like, what? So please, please, please don't negotiate via text. So let me talk to you guys. We talked about this. Let's talk about this piece. So generating and following up and the types of sources, how many leads does it really take you to hit your goal? Love to have that conversation with you for a minute here. Now, these numbers are a, a group of people that we coach at MAPS Coaching over the years. These numbers are just averages. Yours could be higher or lower, and that's why it's so important you track your numbers. And here's what we have found. The studies tell us this. For every 12 contacts or conversations, you should be able to generate a lead. Okay? And by the way, we can go into a whole nother coaching conversation of what is a lead. According to the shift book, Gary says, right, a lead is somebody that you've actually had a conversation with and an appointment with, an appointment with, and until they're a prospect, okay? We know that for every five leads, you should be able to generate at least one appointment. So that's 20%. And the only way we're going to know if this is real for you is the daily tracking your own numbers. And I'm going to share at the bottom of the slide why that is something you would like to do. So we know this. If the desire is to go out on two listing appointments, right, that you'll get one closing. For every two appointments, you'll get one closing. That would mean you're at a 50% conversion ratio. There's no reason that with skills, you could be at 60, 70, 80, and upward. Many of us aren't ever at 100% is sometimes we choose to walk away from the listing for whatever reason. Or they're very unrealistic about the price, we're not attached to the outcome, and we choose to walk away from the listing. Or many other reasons. So another way to look at this is for every 60 conversations, you should generate an appointment. Now, I'll put a little asterisk next to this. It depends who you're calling. A lot of this depends on your calling. Higher quality conversations, your conversations will go down, your listing appointments will go up. Lower quality conversations, your appointments will, you'll have to make more calls. What do I mean by that? Your database, for sale by owners, expired um, referrals versus cold calling versus waiting at open houses, passive versus proactive. So to wrap this up, if you look at the math here, 120 conversations to bring you a paycheck or a commission earned. What is your commission earned up in your town, folks? Average GCI? In our office, it's about 350. For our newer agents, it's about 250. Okay, so 7,500 to 10,000 ish? Yep. Somewhere in that range? Mm hmm. Also, I saw, I have something that um, it also it depends on how effective you are, positively or negatively. And if you are very inefficient at your lead conversion, it's 144 contacts to get one appointment. Yeah. Exactly. Another reason why it's so important to know your scripts. Uh, to practice your scripts, right? Arthur, did you say something? Yeah. You're good? Okay. So remember, this is a baseline, and then we've got to track our own numbers. So just kind of put a, put a bow on this. For every five leads, you should be able to generate an appointment. For every 10 leads, you should be able to get a closing. And here's what we know. Who's, who's, who would be okay with this? Tracking your numbers and getting consistent cash flow. Right? Imagine waking up every morning and instead of going, what's going to happen? Knowing what will happen. See, we know that when we track our numbers, our numbers don't lie. The numbers are the evidence of our activities and our commitments. Numbers tell us a story. We have to pay attention to that, right? So here's just a quick example of somebody in the market center was looking to close 24 deals. It would be about 240 leads for the year. 
How did we get there? Well, if we're looking to close 24, in this case, listings, 240 divided by five listings, right? Five, five, five uh, leads for every uh, appointment that requires 48. If you get a 50% close rate, you get one closing, right? 240 divided by five is 48 listing appointments and 24 sell. Take it a step further. Let's chunk it down, chunk it down, chunk it down. 45 weeks in a year, that comes out to be a lead a day. That's what I'd like you to take away from this call today. That when we get up each and every morning, that we have a strong morning routine. Sometimes I think it's best just to think of working half a day from eight to noon. From eight to noon, just at a really, really high level. Get a lead a day. Put one new lead in your business each day. A lead a day keeps the blank away. I mean, you fill in the blank. Here's an action item for you. Page 95, the shift. I got it right here. Page 95, the six connecting questions. If you haven't seen these team, please grab a copy of the shift book. And Gary gives us the who, the what, the why, the who, what, where, why, when, and how. And he actually gives you the scripts that you could consider using on page 96 and seven be able to convert the lead to an appointment. Question. Jason, it's Jim Alexander. How are you? Hi, Jim. Um, so I have a question for you. Um, yes, sir. Has anything changed in the past 12 to 18 months that um, it still is, if you make enough contacts every single day, you will do the most business? Has that changed any in the past 12 to 18 months? Even, the, even in this year with the COVID, has that changed? I want to put in my own words what I think you're, you're saying, Jim, and thank you for asking your question. Um, the person that makes the most contacts will do the most business. Am I following you? Exactly right, yes. Has that changed? I, don't, I do not think that that's changed. And I, don't, I would go back even 18 years or maybe 30 years, right? He or she who speaks to the most persons wins, right? Um, am I am I am I following your question? I don't know if I'm asking. Well, because because I mean I mean uh, this is my 37th year in real estate. Um, I started when I was 10, right? Right, guys, <laughs> exactly right. And um, I and, love and, and, and and you know used to be that. 20% were people doing 80% of the business. Now it's maybe closer to 85 doing 50, I mean, 15 doing 85% of the business. But what I'm hearing during That's this fair. COVID, the ones that continued to lead generate, the ones that did it every single day consistently, right? Coaches are the ones that are consistently still doing business. At yep. MAPS, have you all seen that change? No, sir. In fact, we're seeing, this is what we're seeing to your point. We are seeing the newer agents doing well through COVID. We're seeing the top producing and seasoned agents doing well through COVID. And we're seeing what we call our rising stars, the ones that are somewhere in between that are the ones that are the group that have been struggling the most. We're not sure exactly. This is what we're seeing just in the last 30 days. So I think to answer your question, I think where you're headed with this is stay in action. Um, please put, put doubt on the shelf and just go. Because when you talk to people and come from contribution, and when you care and ask them how you can serve them, you may or may not be able to help them today. They may know somebody that's looking to. And we know this. We know that what was it, 33% roughly of people either didn't pay their mortgage or their rent. And we know that, I think you alluded to this, Julianne, at the top of the call, right? We don't know where we're headed at the end of the year. And one thing we do know is where we are now, the shortage of inventory, which means there's supply and demand. We've got low interest rates, which means buyers can actually crush it when they buy a property, right? So Jim, what, what were interest rates over the years when you've been in the business, sir? Um, when I started in 84, they were about 14 and a half percent. And you probably saw them go as high as 18 and 19 at one point, right? When I bought my house um, in 1980, um, it was 16 or 17%, I don't remember, yeah. Unreal, right? Yeah. It's what, what is it today, under three? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know what? Just me speaking. No one listen. Just me speaking. It's it's like a crime. If we're not the minute I hang up this call with you, if you don't go through your whole database and find a buyer that would love to, you know, or a seller that's looking to move up two point something percent, that's something to get excited about. Yeah. So I don't know if I answered your question. You I did. hope I did. No, no, All no, right. For sure. Jim, this is Connie uh, Davison. I think maybe part of your question is, 
have the numbers change as far as how many calls, et cetera, as that flows down uh, to hit the same target? Because as you look at shift, um, you know, if you were normally making 100 calls a week uh, during the current times, you might be making 200. Doubling down. Yeah. yeah. And that's why it's so important. I figure all your points are valid. And so everybody that's on the call, at looking at this from an individual perspective, the only way we'll know is if you start tracking your numbers. Yeah. And I would suggest, please don't look for a result 30 days from now or 60 days from now or 90 days from now. We've got to track our numbers for a while, like a good six months to start seeing the trend. And then as your skills go up, you can start seeing your trends change as well. So I agree with you both. Um, and at the end of the day, there are plenty of people making a, a lot of business even through what's going on out there. And, and that's not just me saying, I'm on calls with people throughout the week, all over the country. So I wanna respect your time and I know we're coming up at the top of the hour. So let me piece this together so I can keep the dots on this dot to dot together for everybody. We talked about the ways that you could do business, the, 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 the frequency, the response times. We talked about leads tracking your numbers. Now, how many listings will it really take for you to hit your goal? For you to hit your goal? And here's what we know. We have a, what we call listings needed calculator and your leadership team has this. If they don't, I can send them a copy and yet many of you have seen this. The question is, when's the last time you actually went through this? And what you simply do is just put in what's your goal for the year. You add in for fallout rate. You might even want to bump the fallout rate up a little bit for, the, for, for what we're going through with COVID. And you, you just say, how many listings, how many, what percentage of the business is going to be listings versus buyer? And you go through and the spreadsheet will tally all this up. This example is for an agent to do 24 deals. 70% will be listing side two listings at all times in their inventory, they hit their goal, two. And it's the reason I bring this tool to our attention, sometimes I think that we think the number would be so much bigger. Mm -hmm. And of course, a lot of this has to do with days on market. So if our days on market goes up or down, so there's gonna be some variables. My point is the number is usually smaller significantly to what we think in our mind it really is. So is this a tool coaches that you guys have used or anybody lately? Yes, we yes. have that too. Please, please, please keep this updated at least once a month, right? Here's another way to look at it real quick. And then we got to go, I know. Um, let's just, you know, look at the numbers game. It, it, the numbers are in our favor, right? What if you just connected with five people, 10 people, or 15 people a day, wherever you find yourself on this chart? 200 days a year, that means you get a third of the year off. I'm being pretty nice, aren't I? I mean, that's a thousand, two thousand, or three thousand conversations that we haven't had this last year. And I think I'm being conservative. Wouldn't you agree? If we had a thousand conversations with people out buying, selling, or investing in real estate, surely we'd do 10 deals out of a thousand. So that's a seven thousand, that's a seventy-five thousand dollar raise for you. For the agents, as you said, you know, the newer agents at 250. So just remember this is a numbers game at the end of the day. And a great way to turn this into action, by the way, it's two o'clock. Do we need to go to a hard stop or can we go a couple minutes over? You tell me. A couple of minutes. Okay. So look at this real quick. I'll wrap up with this, right? Are you working in your business or on your business? Working in your business is listing the property, showing the property, open houses. This is working on your business, right? Practicing, role-playing, reviewing market data, creating new systems, right? New models. Question for you as a group, where do you think most real estate agents spend their time working in or working on their business? In, on. in, 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 in the business. In. Arguably, 80% in. of the time in, 90% of the time in. Very little, very little on, okay? So look at this. What is this? The Olympics, right? I want you to think of yourself as an Olympic real estate athlete. All right, look at these men and women. When they work in their business, they're in the event, right? Mm -hmm. When they work on their business, they're practicing. What percentage of the time do you think they're working on their business? Gosh. 99? Yeah. So just think about the way they train, the way they prepare for the results, and the way you're training, the way you're preparing for the results. If we would adopt this mindset, Oh my gosh, what would happen? So I'll wrap up with this and then we'll be done. 
I'd like you to take two quick circles as a checkup as we go for the day. A reality check, 90 day cycle. And I'd like to ask you on a scale of one to 10 for activities, where do you rate yourself? And for commitments, one to 10, where do you rate yourself? Be honest. Your activities and your commitments, your numbers are the evidence. Your numbers are the evidence of your activities, your commitments. So one to 10, one to 10, and then multiply them. If you would, you'd come up with a total number, yes? Yeah. And then look at our scale. Remember this from uh, good old, the good old days, right? Mm -hmm. 90 to 100 was an A, et cetera, and et cetera, yeah? Mm -hmm. So if you're below 59, you don't get a fail. See, I put an O there. That means you've got opportunities. Mm -hmm. A lady in Alabama the other day was speaking. She said, no, honey. She said, that means you're out of business. <laughs> True story. That's what she said. So I just want you to think about this, that when you get comfortable doing <coughs> things that make you uncomfortable, that's when your business is going to move forward. Yes. What does your playbook look like for August? And what's going to put you in that position to be able to score to win in the next 90 days? Okay. No different than these athletes. They're in their huddle. They're running a play. They're looking at what they're going to do. They're, they've got three minutes left on the clock. They've got to score a touchdown. They've got to make a basket. Same thing with us. We've got to get a listing. And I'll just wrap up with this. Bold pivots and options to run that play. Bold pivots and option for August 4th through the 28th for $99. So your coaches know all about that. Um, if there's any interest in that, please let us know. I apologize for going over a couple minutes, and yet the reason that I did is because you guys were awesome and actually asked questions. And you know what? Most people don't ask questions, and I appreciate that. You all see my email real quick, and I'll share my, give my screen back. Todd at kw.com. Cool. If you need Todd, me, I'm here for you. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. Go ahead. Thank you. I want to remind everybody that if you are currently in the coaching program, um, we have a ramp up, so we're going to encourage you to sign up for Bold, and then in uh, uh, September and October, we're meeting weekly to take that activity from Bold and drive it into the next year. So um, ramp up is kicking off next Monday, and we're excited. We'll send out information for you to learn more about it. If you're in the coaching program um, and you've signed up for Bold, then you can join our ramp up. That is awesome, Julianne. I encourage you. There is absolutely not a doubt in my mind that you will be, you will not be sorry that you run that play for August, September, and October so that you can finish the year strong. Um, the $99 investment, um, it's just a no brainer. You know, like, like uh, Authorin said, I'm not here to sell bold pivot. I'm not. I hope that you guys enjoyed the call. Can I hear one or two takeaways before we go? Anybody? I can call on you. Mm -hmm. I am here to sell Bold Pivot. If your business is not going where you want it to go <coughs> um, and you have no plan for $99, if you leave there with one listing, and what's the typical amount of listings they're going to get in Bold Pivot, Todd? Yeah, you know, it's really funny that you bring that up. We have actually stopped about two weeks ago the content that we were driving for the changes and we've revamped it and everything's going to be about in the very beginning versus the end about listings. Um, so, you know, in the bold, classic bold room, to answer your question, Jim, we added 13.8 contracts per bold. Now that was a seven week classroom bold. So, um, you know, we are, we are focusing hard because it seems like our leadership is saying, Hey, we need to help the agents get that listing inventory back. Guys, if, if, if you do this, no other company in the world has this type of opportunity for you to, to finish your, your strong guys. Someone's going to make a lot of money between now and the end of the year. Why not you? Yeah, Jim, thank you so much. Did I say it correctly, coaches? Yes, yes, sir, we did. Um, and Kelly Wiley um, said that her, her takeaway is taking tracking her numbers daily. Yeah, it's tedious and it's worth it. And, and Brenda Chambers said, what is it costing me not to figure this out quickly? So yeah, I, I, so, I so will end with this because I know we're over and I would spend 10 more, 20 more minutes, 30 more minutes. You guys are amazing people. Um, and I mean that with all my heart. Um, you can do this. Just, just know that you can do this. Know that it's not always easy. It's not always simple. It's not always fun. I do know this. It's worth it. 
And each and every one of us on this call has dreams and missions and goals and purpose and people and causes. And, you know, that's where we get to that abundance when we can pay our own bills without having to think about ourselves and we can then reach out, wrap our arms around others. And I don't know any other industry that allows you to make an unlimited income because you decided. Yeah. Awesome. So I hope this was of value to you all. Um, I send my, my heart, my love, my support your way. And um, thank you for playing at such a high level today with me. Thanks so much, Todd. We really appreciate so your time. And thanks everybody for joining us. Again, this has been recorded and it will be on our quantrain.com where all of our classes are. So thank you so much. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Todd. Thanks, Todd. Stop team. Yeah. Thank appreciate you guys for being on. Thank you so much. Thank you.